What happens to men and women sent to prison for years for crimes they did not commit? Tonight, 13 Investigates takes a close look at how Indiana is dealing with those wrongfully convicted. Our own Sandra Chapman was there as Christine Bunch fought for freedom. Now the reality of life on the outside after the injustice. <laughs> Release. Piper and Paxson revel in the sweet taste of freedom. Oh, I know, I know. I know. Reassuring words from a woman who really does know. In 2012, 13 Investigates was there when Christine Bunch was released. She served 17 years at the Indiana Women's Prison, convicted of arson and murder for a fire that killed her three-year-old son, Tony. What was your number? 966-069. Never forget. But new evidence proved there was no crime. The ATF report used to convict Christine had been fabricated to say accelerants were found in Tony's bedroom when original reports showed there were no accelerants. I just, I have to figure out if I can do this, can I make it? Can I live after everything that's happened? Now for the first time, Christine is talking to 13 investigates about life on the outside. She's one of 37 wrongfully convicted in Indiana, robbed of their lives and financial stability. It means starting all over with nothing. No home, no work history, no money or even an ID. So I had to go get a prison ID to walk into the DMV and say, okay, this is me. I need an ID. I was just sitting there crying and they're giving me a whole list of identification that I need and thank goodness the manager walked over and he set down the newspaper and my picture was on the front page and he said, we know who she is. We need to help her with this. At the county parole office, convicts can sign up for multiple services, but for decades, exonerees were not eligible. It's heartbreaking that we we, as a society, broke these people. We took everything from them. And then we just throw them out and say, go, live, rebuild your life. Christine moved to Illinois to rebuild her life near Northwestern Center for Wrongful Conviction. There she worked at the university's Department of Spiritual and Religious Life and helped spark criminal justice reform in Wyoming before deciding to come home. Oh, it looks like somebody just got out. 29 years in prison. She started a not-for-profit to help exonerees. J for J, just is for just us. Yes, something horrible happened here and I lost 17 years of my life, but this is my home. This just can't happen ever again. Last year, she spoke out about the injustices facing exonerees. Indiana lawmakers listened and established a new compensation fund. It awards exonerees $50,000 for each year spent behind bars and now provides some of the same services afforded to parolees. It's enough to give somebody a jump start. In Christine's case, the compensation could amount to about $850,000. That's if she's approved. According to the Indiana Criminal Justice Institute, Christine and at least six others are awaiting word on a state payout. The money would allow Christine to move out of her brother's home and into her own, but it won't make up for the intangible losses she suffered, like missing her second son, Trent, grow up. She was six months pregnant when she was convicted and gave birth to Trent in prison. He was 16 when she was released. We have exonerees that are coming out. Their family is gone. Christine had sought millions in a wrongful conviction lawsuit, but her case, like many others, was tossed out. Government employees and experts have immunity unless someone can prove malicious intent. The man who changed that report died before I was released. The two former Indiana State Fire Marshal investigators who created the arson narrative never explained their actions either or admitted to the egregious mistake. And sometimes you get an apology. Sometimes you don't. Did you get one? I've never gotten one. Christine admits anger comes and goes. There is no amount of money you can ever give me to make up for that, to make it better 
fix it. Because it just can't be fixed. She's simply determined to live a meaningful life and to help those who have been harmed by injustice to start over too. 35 states now have a range of compensation laws, anywhere from $5,000 up to $80,000 a year. Now, Indiana is one of 10 states adopting a rule of $50,000 per year, but only if exonerees have not received payouts from a lawsuit. Sandra, from time to time we hear about much larger awards as the result of legal action. Is that rare? Well, we hear, Scott, that for the most part, only about 1% of exonerees are impacted to get those types of rewards. Mm -hmm. Now, Kevin Richardson and the Exonerated Five won $41 million for their wrongful conviction in the Central Park assault case back in 1989. Richardson was just 14 years old when that ordeal began. We sat down with him to talk about what he has gone through and the reforms he would like to see. You can watch that entire interview at WTHR.com. Interesting story. Sandra Chapman, thanks.